Craig Hamilton asked, should horsehair sporns become part of civilian wear again? They tend to be military or pipe band wear here. I don't know about in the States or further afield. So I take it Craig is uh, back in the homelands somewhere. Sure. But, uh, um, horsehair. Horse, horse hair. Should people wear horsehair sporns just as a matter of kilting up? Sure. Um, back in you know, Victorian and Edwardian times, like horsehair or goat hair. Mm-hmm. More more often or as mm-hmm. often as, as horse yep. hair would be very, very common. A longer hair sporn. So let's say 16 to 18 inches long, stuck down below the bottom of the, the functional pouch section of a sporn. Um, <laughs> should they become, you know, daily wear again? There there are some a few barriers. I'm gonna say, generally speaking, no, for two reasons. One. There is a a straight up cost barrier. Um, Daily wear to me is if I'm going to be wearing something daily or several times a week, several times a month, um, I'm not going to want something that is like super duper expensive that I may, you know, somewhat destroy, um, depending on how hard on your outfit you are. Um, A a horsehair or a goat hair sporin will run you north of 400 bucks. Um, for a, <laughs> yes, for a good quality one. Um, can you get like imitation horsehair, like monofilament, like weed whacker cord, you know, type thing? Sure, but even that isn't going to be super cheap. Yeah. Um, and so, option, you know, reason one I would say is essentially cost. It's it's not a day sporing, you know, hundred dollar range um, for something to wear every single day. Um, Reason two for specifically horsehair is that they're difficult to manage and wrangle. Um, uh, you, a lot of times, you, they, they take much more care than a plain leather sporn. So there's something called uh, shoshin, which is right. you know designed for you know show horses it's for like detangling their their tails or their manes and that kind of stuff. It's like a spray on type thing. Um, Shoshin, S-H-O-W-S-H-E-E-N, if you want to look it up. Um, it's kind of a, a leave-in conditioner, roughly speaking, mm-hmm. for horsehair. And that can be used, but it's kind of, uh, it will, like conditioner, it'll look a little greasy over time. Um, conversely, if you don't use something like that, horsehair, I know a lot of pipers that just kind of like, throw their kit in a bag oh. after a show or after a, a, a parade or whatever and it ends up just kind of like poof and horse hair just kind of goes everywhere and it just kind of becomes a big puffy bally mess it tangles yeah it, it becomes tangles, a rat's nest yeah exactly yeah. It's, a, it's it's a dog's dinner it's a rat nest exactly so if you're going to wear a horse hair sporn as something you know daily wear kind of thing what some people will do is have a bag or, you know, an old, one of your wife's old nylons and kind of put the horsehair sporin into a tube to kind of keep it compressed, um, allowing it to dry after, you know, if there's any rain or any kind of moisture or humidity in it, you know, allow it to dry and then put it inside of a tube to keep it nice and kind of compacted before the next event you want to wear it for. Mm-hmm. But but overall, it's it is a much more care intensive item than a leather spore, which you really don't have to worry about. Yeah, your thoughts? I agree. Um, I would say it'd be great to have them as a comeback for uh, semi formal to formal, um, but I'm biased in favor of goat for that, not horsehair. I think goat sporns are awesome, but I'm the Victoria file here. Okay, so I would I would wear Victorian clothing all the time if I could. Um, nah, I'm lying. I wouldn't. I'm too lazy. But, um, but I fantasize about it. Let's put it that way. I so, pretend I would like. Yeah, to. I well, I would I in would some like ways to. if I were if I were yeah. a person of leisure. Um, so I think it'd be great if goat hair horns would make a bit more of a comeback. But they are not cheap. I've wanted one for ages, and I've just never been able to rationalize spending the money on it. So, um, if I had one, I would definitely be saving it for special occasions because I'd, I'd be too worried about it. Do they look cool? Yeah. I mean, when I was a kid and I first saw, you know, photos and lithographs and stuff of guys in kilts, it was always the Victorian stuff and and the sporn, which I 
at the time had no idea what the hell I was looking at. I just knew it looked cool. So to me, it is iconically the most iconic of sporns you can have. So that's why it's still part of dress uniforms everywhere. Um, so it'd be awesome. But until somebody invents one that is easy care, I don't see it happening. So, yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Maybe. What they need to do is have a Velcro, have a kilt, uh, have a sporn with Velcro on it. No. So you just have a goat no. or horsehair piece. No. And you just kind of, you know, lift up the flap. No. No. And then no. you just have a removable nope. horsehair. Nope. No. Why not? It's because it's going to look like a dead animal hanging from your crotch. No, it's gonna, because it's going to look like just a pelt. If Velcro, if Velcro's right here, and then you know, it's just like <laughs> when you when you don't need it. Back me up on this. I think it's a great idea. Sure. <laughs> when you're not wearing it as a sporn, you can put it on BZZ top. Or Santa. <laughs> or Santa. Uh, yeah. Did you kill Santa? <laughs> um. Yeah, no, I think I think it's a neat idea, and and who knows, maybe it'll become more popular. Um, the closest thing out there right now is like some of those Welsh sporns where they have the lamb's wool, sprint, whatever it's called, yeah. And they have the lamb's the lamb's wool uh, tassels which hang down below the body of the sporn. I kind of find that interesting. I think it, it's a little odd, but I think it kind of works. So yeah. there might be a compromise in a new design at some point where there's a bit more body to it, um, or a bit more length to some kind of a element like that yeah i i also but, kind of in in a, in a weird way will draw the the parallel to full mask sporins yeah where yeah it's yeah. one of those things where a full mask sporin technically can be a worn during the day or evening it is a it right. is a sporin for all occasions most people will reserve it for formal functions or for dressier occasions because they're not cheap right um but if you own one you can wear it for a bunch of different things that's kind of how I would view the goat hair sporn as well. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Cool. Hope that helps. Mr. Ian. Was Hi there. Resident Victoriophile and 19th century history nerd here saying to you that I think horse hair and goat hair sporns are the bomb, as they used to say, and should make a comeback. But I'm not sure they're right for everybody. What do you think? Are there parts of historical Highland dress you'd like to see come back or are there other parts that you're like glad they won't come back? They're just not practical or just weird looking in the modern context. Tell us in the comments what you think is great about historical Highland dress.